All right, ladies and gentlemen, I know you're excited for this one. Without further ado, our next guest, please welcome Hero Finds Tiffin. Yo, 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 what's going on? Wow. Keep it going, Liverpool. Wow. We needed a hero, and here he is. Give him another round of applause. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you for coming. Oh, I love you, too. I love you, too. We've got a rowdy bunch here, Hero. We've got a rowdy bunch of people, and Liverpool is that kind of town. We're going to have a lot of fun with this one. A few questions from me, and then we're going to ask you guys to head to the microphones here. We've got one, two, up there's three and four. So in just a few minutes, we will have you uh, ask a question to our amazing guest. So I have to ask you, first off, how has Comic-Con Liverpool been treating you? I've loved it. Guys, you lot are amazing. I've only been here for like two hours and, and you guys are incredible. I feel like when I first started doing these things, I'd get so nervous and like the fan would be shaking and I'd be shaking and we couldn't get a still picture. And now I feel like I've done it enough to like properly enjoy it and everyone's so lovely. So I'm so happy to be here and thank you again. Give yourselves a round of applause. That's right. Now Liverpool's such a fun town and this is uh, a very, very fun atmosphere. Have you had a chance to experience any of the local cuisines or my boy Gabriel life? who's out there in the back who's going to come out and wave to you real quick come Gabriel come on Gabriel give us a wave leave it up for yeah. Gabriel Woo! Gabriel 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 no, my, my, <laughs> my good friend Gabriel uh, goes to uni out here he's just finished his third year literally like last weekend so maybe another yeah, yeah. Thank you. But yeah, he's been showing me around. Um, we just walked around the city, the town. I love how you can say go into town and like, you know where you are. If you said go into town in London, it wouldn't mean anything. Like, you could be anywhere. That's right. So we had a little stroll around, went to have some Italian food. I forgot the name of the restaurant, but it was lovely. And yeah, I'm trying to explore a bit more later tonight and maybe on Sunday. And I've never been to Liverpool before. It's my first time. So. First time in Liverpool. Wow, you got to give him some recommendations, guys, to all of our locals here. I heard that replause over there. Thank you for that. <laughs> now, these Comic Cons are a lot of fun. There's a lot to see, but you mentioned being nervous. Is there anyone that you've met at this particular Comic Con or even in your career that you kind of wanted to fan over? <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think it's not a shock to people to say I met, um, I support West Ham. Some of you might know that. Uh, <laughs> And I met Mark Noble, who's like a, been a club servant, been in the club for a long, long time, since as long as I can remember. And he actually retired like a week ago. He had his last home game. And I met him one time and I was just like in shock, shaking. And I was on my way out of somewhere and I was just like, thank you so much. You don't know who I am, but I know who you are. Thank you. And that was it. And then I left, I was like, I should, probably should have had a proper conversation. But there you go. I'm sure he remembers you for sure. I hope so. <laughs> well, obviously your family is very well versed in the Hollywood machine, but is it something that you were encouraged to get into from a young age? Is it something you wanted to get into from a young age? That's a really good question. When I first started doing acting roles, it was for like a day off school or a bit of, you know, just pocket money to go buy a football kit and some sweets. And then as I've got older, I've, I've really loved it. And I have to say there was a moment towards the end of my school career when I was like, hey, I want to take this seriously. And my mom was like, listen, we'll do this, we'll do that, we'll do everything we can, like, if you want to do it, I'll help you. My dad was like, are you sure? Like, I, I, you know, it's not, it's not the most promised, guaranteed career, so make sure you have a plan B and whatnot. And I have to say, I'm so grateful he's done that because it could have not worked out and you need to have a backup plan. But it was nice to have mom on one side, dad on the other. You've got a nice little bit of perspective from either side. So yeah, super grateful for my, my parents and the whole family, man. They've really, really supported me, so. Well, now we have to ask, you know, just between friends here, what would have been your plan B if you were not in this business? Did you have an idea of what else you might want to do? I was, I was flip, I say flipping burgers. I was doing Atlanta barbecue at a place called Miss Peas, and I loved it. I love food, I love cooking, but I love eating a little bit more. So, yeah, maybe be a chef, maybe. I say chef, probably just keep flipping burgers and eating them, but. Food critic, maybe? Some, some, yeah, food critic, food critic, I reckon. That's a good one. Yeah. Just get paid to eat, basically. Exactly. Yeah, good career choice. All right, guys, again, we have our microphones ready, so I know you're going to be shy, but please come up and get, or maybe they won't. Wow, good stuff. 
I had another question, but I don't think I've ever seen you guys run to the microphone like that. There are four of them, so don't play favorites. All right, here, shall we go to the fan questions? Are you ready for this? I think I'm ready. All righty. We're going to go to microphone number one right over here. Hello. Hi. Um, so I was going to say, what's your favorite phrase in Harden's le le letter for Tessa? You're really testing me here, you know. <laughs> what movie was that? How long ago was that? Because I was going to say whatever I saw was, but that's not in the letter, is it? So, um, it is in the letter. <laughs> oh my God, I've only said it like 700 times in intros to trailers, and so I'm so sorry, but it's got to be that. Every time someone asks me to put a quote in their book, it's always that one because... It's beautiful, isn't it? And it's not actually from after, it's from a different book from before, but we've stole it and now it's ours. So it's definitely whatever our souls are made of. Thank you for your question. Thank you. We've got a question over here at microphone two on the right. Um, if you could go back in time and replay like, any character you've done, which, what would it be and why? Replay one of the characters that I've, that I've played and, and give it another go. Maybe Yoan in Safe. I was in a TV show called Safe, and I feel like it was one of like the earlier things. I think it was my first TV thing. And listen, as an actor, you're, I feel like you look back at your work, and 99% of the time you're like, oh my God, that's terrible. Oh my God, how am I getting hired again? And that was one of the ones that I was like, yeah, I could, I could do that again one more time. So Yoan from Safe would be the answer to that question. Good question, thank you. Thank we you. were talking to some of the guys from Gotham earlier about watching yourself back. Do you think it's necessary to go back and sort of maybe nitpick yourself a little bit or is this something you totally avoid watching yourself? Yeah, uh, I feel like it's each their own. I don't feel like there's necessarily a right answer, um, but I, 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 ha I have to, I feel like. I, I get excited to watch it back. And then as I say, I watch it back and I'm like, oh gosh. <laughs> but um, I have to say, I did a film called First Love that I've watched back like four or five times now, and I think we have did a really good job, and I'm really excited for everyone to see that one. So, yeah, I see someone doing this there. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good to watch something back and actually be proud of it instead of... Yeah, yeah, listen, you're, you should be your, your, your own, you know, toughest critic, and like, I say all of this, but listen, I enjoy it, and if you guys or some of you like it, then I'm winning, so we're fine. Yes, and aren't we proud of him as well, ladies and gentlemen? Yes, Guys, indeed. thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. We've got a question all the way up at the top. Uh, microphone three, hi up. Um, out of all the films that oh you've, <laughs> uh, out of all the after films that have been made, what's your favorite scene to film and why? I loved booting that door down when Trevor was in the bathroom. Oh, that was good. That was good. That whole bit, I feel like the whole time we were in that hotel, there was the bit with, uh, did it make it to the foot? The bit when he pulls off the, the tablecloth and the stuff, yeah, yeah. Um, that, I think that nearly didn't make it, and luckily it did. So yeah, that, and then I'm like banging on the door a bunch of times and just coming with that aggressive, like, that was fun today. And then boot down the door, I'm sure a couple of you know that door broke, and it was a real door. And they just said, yeah, just kick it as hard as you want, and we just broke through this expensive hotel room door. Uh, but that was so fun, I'd do that again a 100 times if I could. That was a great question, thank you. So no stunt double for you, Hero. Oh, I asked to do all my own. But they don't, sometimes they don't like to let you, but I'm always doing everything I can to try to do my own stunts. <laughs> We've got a question up here on the right at microphone four. Hi, so we're both 24, 25, and I'd say it's pretty young. Uh, <laughs> would you say it was difficult to get into the sort of traumatic headspace that the character portrays? Definitely. Um, I thought that question was going somewhere else. <laughs> Um, Fuck's sake. But no, it definitely is. And that is a great question. And I've always said, I feel like as you get older, acting should get not necessarily easier, but you should have more tools because as you say, the older you get, the more kind of experience you have in life and the more people you meet to draw, draw inspiration from. So I think it was, it was tough. And to answer the previous question about redoing a role, I think you always learn so much more in your life that you're like, I could go back and give that another go and I'd be slightly more informed in certain areas. So it was, it was definitely, definitely tough. I actually did like a fair bit of research into, into that because it's quite a kind of, you know, specific, important thing to get right. So no, it was, it was, it was tough. That's a great question. Thank you. Great question. Thank you. We've got a question over here at microphone two. Hi. Um, now we're here at Comic-Con. Is there any sort of character Marvel that you would like to play? Marvel? Yeah. 
There's a guy called Tom Holland who plays Spider-Man. I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind putting that suit on for a little bit. But uh, but no, I mean, I haven't seen the new Batman yet. But I'd love. Should I? Have, have we you seen it? Do we like it? Yeah. I need to watch that one soon. But they, they're all they're all taking them. I reckon. I reckon Batman because he's just he's, he's real. I feel like that's that's who I connect to most. I know it's not Marvel, but I've said I've said James Bond before. That's something in a similar-ish vein that I've always. Say again. Further down the line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully. Too young for him yet. Hopefully, you guys get on the Twitter and let them know. Yeah. And then we'll make it happen. Hero Thank finds you. Tiffin as James Bond. Who's here for it? <laughs> Get a question over here. Oh, from someone that you might recognize, Gryffindor. Gryffindor. Nah, he can't answer me a question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just wanted to know, what was your favorite line to say as Tom Riddle? <sighs> I can speak to snakes too. <laughs> they find me, whisper things. Is that normal for someone like me? People used to ask me to say that and I'd always say, no, I can't believe I just did that for you guys. <laughs> the, the 10 year later rendition. But yeah, I love that. I love that. Thank you. Question up at the top at microphone three. Hi up. How did it feel being able to act in different shows and that like Harry Potter at quite a young age? Sorry, I was looking at number one. I was really, her mouth's not sorry, talking. He's up How here number three. Sorry. You said three. I'm being, I'm being sorry. Sorry. So, sorry, say that again, please. How did it feel being able to act at like quite a young age in like Harry Potter and that? Do you know what? I feel like so much of my life, I'm just learning as I go and faking it till I make it. So like even here now, I'm like pretending I have good answers for these questions, but it's, it was surreal. Like I remember when I first got the role, I had done like seven auditions and I like ran and jumped on the sofa and just buried my head in it for like a minute and just couldn't, couldn't believe it. And then it's just been an honor and a blessing that more roles have come and I've got to do like a wide variety of different, different roles, different characters. And I aim to keep going down the vein of making sure every character is kind of different from the last and trying to portray a wide variety of people. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful and, and yeah, thank you. We're gonna go to microphone number four up at the top. Uh, I just want to say I love you. <laughs> and um, um, who is your favorite person to work with on the after set? Thank you so much. <laughs> My favorite person to work on the after set was, you all want me to say Joe, don't you? All right, Joe first. Honestly, though, it's been so nice to like have someone for your first lead role who's in the same position and go down the same, you know, paths and journeys for four movies. So, Joe first, but close second would be Steve Moyer. He plays Vance in the later films, and me and him just get on so well. A bit like father and son, almost, ironically. But no, honestly, when we first met, I feel like I was in my trailer door, like doorway, like eating food, half in the sun. And he's been, oh, hero. And we ended up speaking for like an hour and 15 minutes. Both didn't finish our lunch, got called back to set. So yeah, me and him, me and him get on really well. Question over here at microphone two. Um, did you steal anything from the set of After? And if so, what did you steal? I, I didn't steal anything. <laughs> I didn't steal anything. But yeah, I might have acquired a ring loads of his clothes, like loads of his clothes of the last one. At the end we were like, do you need any of I think Joe did the same and we all just kind of cleared all of that. So I've got almost his entire wardrobe, bar the like iconic jeans, boots and jacket, um, which it feels like he wears in every scene. But um, all the other stuff, the nice trackies, a ring, and I feel like there's, I feel like there's some been, been some other trinkets, but they might be from a film that's not out yet. So I might not be able to say yet. We're intrigued. Now these items, do you have them displayed or do you actually use them in real life, wear them in real life? Do you know what? I'm still between my parents. I finally secured a place. I moved out and rented with some friends and my like childhood rooms at my mom's and my dad's is just like suitcases and boxes piled up. So I do somewhere and I'm waiting to have a little, you know, like memento kind of shrine area for all of it. But currently it's in the deep dark depths of some cardboard box and I just <laughs> can't ever find half my stuff. <laughs> We're gonna go to question, uh, question here at microphone number one. Hi. Hey, if there's any actor that you could work with, who would it be? That's a great question. And I'm sorry for my answer because you might not know them, but it's my friend Shay Cole, who played a role in Small Act series and he's in the New Atlanta. And he's a really, really good friend of mine. And we both met before we'd like, secured big roles and we've both like kind of come up and I feel like we every time we the idea of working together would be so much fun so 
yeah, look out for me and Shay and something soon. Thank you. We'll go up to uh, microphone number three up at the top. In your opinion, <laughs> which are opinions on Chelsea? What? Oh, oh! I'm not allowed to swear, am I? No. Um, listen, it's tough. My friends, a lot of my friends support Chelsea, and for some reason, I should want my friends to be happy. But when it comes to football, we like want each other to be unhappy, even if it doesn't affect my team. So I often find myself really happy when Chelsea lose. Having said that, if you're a Chelsea fan, I love Chelsea. Blue is the colour. Let's go. <laughs> Very good diplomatic answer. We're going to go to uh, microphone four up at the top right. Hi. Um, I just want to say I love you so much. And um, if you could have any superpower, what would it be? I used to watch Incredibles, yeah. And you know Dash? Yeah, I'm sure you all know Dash, surely. <laughs> I used to I used to want to be him so badly. So I think as much as it's not the most like if you kind of want to fly or do some, I think just super speed would be so cool. You know, in the race when he's like running and then his dad's like slow down because they're gonna know your you know and he's got like yeah love that dash super speed. Super speed. We're gonna go to uh, microphone number two right here. Uh, what's been your favorite genre to film? Seeing as you've done The Woman King, Lonely Born in the World, and First Love. It's so hard because as I said earlier, I love to do like a little bit of everything, so it's hard to pick a favorite genre. But I mean, I've done a lot of romance, haven't I? <laughs> uh, so I, I've loved that so far, but I'd love to do something a bit more physical, like a bit more like action with a good storyline and you know, like good well-developed characters, but I'd love to do something a bit more physical, get a bit bigger, get in the gym, get some specialist training and get some sort of weapon or martial art, you know, something very typically boyish action role maybe. That's what I'm looking at next, I reckon. Wonderful. We're gonna go to microphone number one here on the left. Hiya. Hi, I wanna say I love you very much. I feel like I'm gonna have a pitch perfect moment of throw up everywhere right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but, oh my God, my, my mind's gone blank. Uh, oh good. Do you know how many times I'm answering a question and my brain goes, oh my God, <laughs> you've forgotten the question and now you're just talking. It happens have all the time. I have two questions, if that's okay. Um, the first question is, I want to be an actor. What advice would you give to someone who's young like me who wants to get into the industry? Do it. Try. <laughs> There's no harm in trying. I feel like you'll have so much fun along the way regardless. And if you just, I always say, just get a friend, go on Google or write your own if you want to be cre super creative and get behind that. Just find a two-page monologue or scene, read it with your friend, film it, say, let's play it as if we hate each other, let's play it as if we love each other, and literally make it fun and just enjoy it. And I feel like even if you don't follow the acting career all the way down the line, that helps you so much as a person just to build confidence and like, we all act when our mum says like, you know, what were you doing when you were out there? You all act at some point. So I think, yeah, doing it, doing it for fun, I feel like is the best way, the best way to start. And my second question is, I actually don't know if this is allowed, but I wasn't allowed to hug you in the meet and greet. Can I hug you now? Am I allowed? Uh, is security going to tackle us? Because I don't they're know. Say, they're saying no. They're saying no. Oh. Personal space is can what we do, we're can about Can we do like an air hug? At maybe? Monopoly yeah. event. Air hug. Give him a round of applause for an air hug. <laughs> Got it. And great advice, by the way, for young actors, because very often we'll have people in the audience that ask about acting advice and things like that. So we really appreciate that very much. We're going to go to um, microphone number four up here at the top on the right. Hi, ladies. Hi. Um, I just want to say I love you so much. Um. <laughs> I love you all, too, by the way. I realize if I didn't say it to the first person, I can't say it from now, but it applies to everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Um, in the first after film, which was the hardest film to see, I mean, scene to film? Sorry, I'm a nervous. Hmm. In the first one? Yeah. Do you know what? They're all like one long movie in my head now. Like, I find it so hard to separate. But I do think the post bet reveal scene, or even like during the bet reveal scene, and I've said this before, but when you shoot a scene when there's like five or six of us and it's an important scene, you start with like the wide, like the shot from further away, and you come closer and closer. And then when you start doing people's coverage, it takes like a whole day to do a short scene if there's a lot of people who have lines and you need to come in close to their face because you've got to move the camera so much. And then it ends with like rain pouring and obviously, I mean, I'm sure some of you might have seen the film, but yeah, it's a pretty dramatic scene. So after the longest day, I think that took its toll on me and Joe, that whole kind of, but maybe it worked in our favor because to have, to be so drained throughout the day and then do that kind of breakup scene might have, might have helped in a weird way.
With acting, I think a lot of uh, the guests that we have here at Comic-Con, they say that there are a lot of misconceptions about it, that they, get, they just look at the glamour, the glitz, but it has a lot of grueling hours and, and a lot of waiting around. Is, is that what you would agree with? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I find it hard, this, because we're so lucky. I'm so lucky to do what I do, and I, I, I find it hard to, like, talk a lot. And, I mean, my, my family and friends will, will be like, no, you complain all the time. You don't find it hard. But I do, I do. I, I feel like I've worked, like, landscaping got jobs and, and flipping burgers. But to answer your question, honestly, the, when you are working and you're in it, it's way, it's, it is, it is kind of takes more of a toll than when I was flipping burgers or digging holes in the ground. Yeah. Um, but then you get to do all of this stuff, like meet you guys and come here to Liverpool for a couple of days, and like the the pros massively outweigh the cons. So it's tough at times, but every job is. So. Yeah. Well said. It's good to have perspective for sure. We're gonna go to microphone two right here on the right. Hello. Hello. This is yeah. proper random, but what colour lidded milk do you drink? <laughs> I love questions like this, man. Thank you so much. I love a question Thank you. like that. <laughs> All right, cool. So now I drink oat milk, and I kind of hate myself for it, but I just I kind of like it now, and it's just fine. But um, if I was having cereal, it's blue lid, or tea, it's blue lid. But if I'm going to drink milk, which was rarely, but every now and then, it's got to be green lid if you're drinking it. Never, never touch red lid. I don't know what that's about. You may as well buy some milk and pour water into it. But then Sainsbury's do this gold lid one that's quite fancy. So when my mum's like, can you buy milk? Because I buy oat milk, I get her the gold lid one. That was the most random applause I've ever heard for the green lid milk. I had such a milk. good detailed answer about your, your proper random question. I loved it. Thank you. I'm American. I didn't even realize the lids and the different, I don't know. I feel I very... You have lids. You do like Tetra Pak, right? Uh, sometimes, yeah. That's very old school classic, yes. We're going to go to uh, microphone number one right over here on the left. Hello. Uh, yeah. What's the most annoying thing fans always ask you to do or say? Uh, when they ask me what the most annoying thing is that fans do, I'm joking, I'm joking, <laughs> I'm joking. Um, do you know what? I haven't actually even experienced this like too much, but I feel like a lot of people do find it not great when people like, I'm not saying this when there's loads of cameras in my face, phones up. I don't mean this for now, but I mean like, you know, if someone's like from a distance, they've noticed you and then they whip their phone out and then they're like, talk, and it's kind of like, I can't go over and say hi to you because that would be obnoxious and you might not even be noticing me. But then there's this weird limbo that you're in where you're like, shh, I don't want to say hi, but I know they're going to say hi. And then they say hi and you're like, oh my God, hi, I was waiting, waiting for this. <laughs> Because what if you say hi and they're not even filming you? Yeah, you I've had the things awkward. before where I've said to friends that I think these girls are going to notice me and then they just, they looks like they have and then they completely don't. I'm like, I feel like the biggest idiot. <laughs> 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 but no, there's not a lot. I've had the best, I've been prepared to have like bad fan experiences and I'm s like, I say lucky, but you guys, are s I, I've only really had positive, positive interactions. So, so yeah. You should give Thank yourselves you, a round of applause for that. If you've done it well. You've impressed Hero. Now, there have to be some rules, though. There have to be some boundaries, like maybe not when you're eating. What's the best way to approach? Everyone knows. I think people just not like, as I say, like, if I am eating and someone says, like, everyone's always so respectful and polite and they wait for me to finish eating anyway. And, like, as I say, in my experience, I, obviously there are some things you wouldn't want someone knocking on your cubicle, like, hi, I saw you go in there. Can I come in? Like, <laughs> but no, I've, I've even, like, when I'm eating a meal yesterday when we went out and Gabriel took us out, Remember Gabriel? Remember Gabriel? <laughs> yeah, Gabriel. Gabriel. Come on out here, Gabriel. <laughs> Woo! Give it up for Gabriel, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we're, just, we're just irritating him at this point. Um, yeah, see, I've done that thing. What was, it, what was the question? No, someone, one of the fans, one of someone came and noticed me while I was eating, and I noticed, was it you? Are you pointing to her? Was it you in the Italian restaurant who I came to? Oh, no worries. Well, hi, and hi again anyway. But, um, but yeah, and they waited, and I noticed her notice me as soon as I walked in, and she waited to the very end, and I feel like I always get that kind of respect. So thank you so much, guys. It's uh, genuinely, honestly, only really ever been positive. So. That's wonderful. We're going to take a question at microphone four up at the top. Hi. Um, out of all the after films, what was the most emotional scene to film? It's quite possibly the one I described earlier after the bet reveal scene in the first one. Um, it's, it's, it's quite a lot of emotional scenes in these films, aren't there? I'm just racking my brain like, wow, there's a lot, there's a lot. But um, a close second to that one would maybe be 
just in case anyone hasn't seen it, there's like a big reveal between Vance and Harden in a hotel towards the end of something. That that was that was definitely that was definitely difficult and emotional to film. But there's a lot of them. There's a lot in these films. Oh. Microphone four. Go ahead. She wants you to say, "Fucking Trevor." <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't turn the microphone back on. <laughs> Fucking Trevor. <laughs> My job is so fun. You did ask if you could swear earlier. You were very polite about that. Thank you. We've got a question uh, at microphone two. I, I can't actually believe that you're actually like, looking at me at the minute. Sorry. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi, uh, how are you doing? Um, I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm great. I'm really excited to hear your question when you're ready. Um, First of all, I just want to say hi on behalf of my friend Molly. She's in the hospital at the minute, so she couldn't come. So I just want to say hi on behalf of her. Can everyone in here make a lot of noise for Molly, guys? <laughs> yeah. <Thank you. laughs> Molly, I don't know how she's going to see this. Hopefully she will somehow, but I'm sending all my love and I hope everything's okay. Thank you for that. And also, Such a good friend for that, by the way. Thank you. And my question is, was there ever a time where you met your like old celebrity crush or like current celebrity crush and you was like, oh, I can't really act like this because I've got to be professional. <laughs> Question. My, 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 t my young child celebrity, cr cr when I was a child, I have to say, celebrity crush was Kim Possible. <laughs> and I haven't, I, haven't, I haven't met her, but if I did, I'd probably be, I would be shocked. <laughs> so we're waiting on it. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Tomorrow, everyone's going to come up here and Kim Possible cosplay. Just wait. See what you've <laughs> done, hero. <laughs> oh, we've got a question over here at microphone one. Um, what kind of music do you like? Um, I like... I love Harry Styles. Do you know what? I actually... I, I went Coachella recently and... I'm not, I'm not like a Harry Styles fan, I don't listen to his music, but we don't have a choice nowadays because this guy just plays everywhere, in a good way. Like I love As It Was and Watermelon Sugar. And we were at Coachella and I was watching, um, we were watching him perform. And like at first I was like, oh my God, yeah, Harry Styles, like as a joke. And then after a while I was like, I've actually been staring for like 20 minutes. This guy's a rock star. He is like so compelling and so like just, I don't know, he's amazing. So yeah, love Harry. But to answer your question, I like a bit more rap. I like some UK rap, but not so much some other UK rap. And I like a lot of 80s, 90s R&B. And, and I like a lot of my friends' music. What's, what's your favorite, favorite artist or song? What music do you like? I like rap. Nice. What's your favorite song at the moment? Or any song you like at the moment? <laughs> Gotta mix these packs and potions, no peace till I put a <laughs> I'm on a block like wearing a head top to, I see, no, he likes that one. He's smiling. <laughs> favorite song, you wanna tell us your favorite song? Montevio. Can you sing it for her? I'm joking, I wouldn't do that to you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they put you on the spot. You might as but well. Please. Thank you so much for your question. We're going to go up you. to microphone number three up at the top left. Um, I just wanted to say that I love you so much. <laughs> Thank um, you. My, my question is, how did you get cast as Harden Scott? Like, what was the process of it? I had three or four auditions in the space of like three or four days. And that's always difficult when they come to, because they all kind of like mix up in your head, like the, you're trying to learn them all at once. And, and um, I remember I did the first one and it was also jumbled up in my head. And then I did the second one and it was all kind of like, it was all felt like it was moving really quick. Usually you get an audition and you have like so much time to prepare for that specific one. And I really kind of just thought, oh, I'm not gonna get this because I'm just doing so much other stuff. And it's just, you know, none of them are gonna be great. They're all gonna be okay. And then I got the next one and a callback, and then I did a, 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 I think it was a Zoom. Were we using Zoom then? Was it maybe just a FaceTime? Um, and then they flew me out to Chemistry Read in LA. And I was like, what free, free, free trip to LA for a week? Let's do it. And then came back home, and my agent from America, I have a UK agent and an American agent, and the American one was over in the UK. And I'd come back as well from this point and done it all. And he was like, oh, I'm so sorry, you didn't get the role. And I was like, oh. He was like, only joking, you did. I was like, why, why did you do that? <laughs> and like, Joey, what? So yeah, Joey, I'd never forgive you for that one. But yeah, that, that, was, that was the process. It was a lot of ups and downs. I didn't really, I don't know. I didn't really know. It was, it was surprising, but yeah. Oh, wow, looking back. If I, if I only knew. <laughs> Thanks, Joey.
but that's <laughs> uh, we had a, a lovely lady ask earlier about being an actor uh, with the audition process uh, how did you deal with rejection a lot of people ask the actors that how they deal with rejection and it's a very nerve-wracking experience as well that's a really good question I started off doing a little bit of modeling while I was acting, but just like, you know, I had the opportunity, so I started going. And you go to casting, similar to auditions, but there's not much to do other than stand there and be looked at. And there's like a room full of people. So you go in and often I've walked into the door and they've been like, mm, no, you're all right, thank you. And you're like, all right, see you later, and just go. So I feel like you kind of build up a natural, like, I don't have the opportunity. I, I'm lucky to have this opportunity to even walk into the room and be with a modeling agency. So I'm not going to take that for granted. If they don't want me for this, fine. At least I got the opportunity. And I have it a little bit the same with acting. It's like, again, if I had fun, did the audition, I learned a lot from it, I've practiced, I've got better. When I don't get, my agents say that they love the fact that I don't pester them to find out if I got a role or not. Because you get so many no's. You get so many no's. And after I do it, I try and just erase the audition from my brain. And they're like, we love that you don't ask because we don't have to call you up and be like, you didn't get it <laughs> all the time. <laughs> so yeah. It's a great outlook to not take it personally. It's very good advice. We've got uh, someone with a question here at microphone number four. Hi. Um, so I have two questions, if that's okay. I don't mind. Okay. So the first one is, what was your least favorite scene to film in any three or four of the movies? It's weird because the lake scene was so fun at times when the sun came out and then when the sun went in and then there's like snakes and mu muddy this and that and leaves and, and dirt and then like the tattoos are coming off and then that one just really, uh, it was so great when, when we were getting the good bits and then there's moments where it was just so tedious. You forget with those tattoos that like when you're swimming and it's hot, like they rub off and then you gotta touch them up again and everything is just such a long, slow process. So that was pretty stressful. We also had paparazzi like so far away on the other side of the lake, with like a zoom lens catching us. So that's always makes you feel a bit like, oh. But yeah, next question. Oh, yes. Um, so my next question is, if you could live in any country in the world, what country would you live in? England. It's got to be England. But that's, I'm biased because I'm so lucky I get to travel so much. When I'm away, people are like, what do you, like, you know, oh, you, should, you should go on holiday. Or like, I'm like, my holiday is at home where I was raised, chilling with my friends. Because when I'm taken away from that, it's, so, it's such a luxury and a blessing to be able to work abroad, visit a bunch of amazing places, but always come back to the UK. Yes. Good answer. Are you going to change the answer if this was somewhere else? You could just say the town that you're in? Probably. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> but you guys got the truth here today. So. Yes. Comic-Con exclusive. We're going to go to microphone two right down here. Two's. Hello. After one. Yeah. Hi. Um, I've, I've never spoke, uh, spoke in a microphone before, so hi, guys. Have some fun. Shout. Yeah. Shout. Maybe. Yeah, it's your first time. Do something. Say. Do something. Ask a question. Hello, I'm from Birmingham. <laughs> yeah, let's make some noise Round for Birmingham. Round of applause, right? Make some noise for yeah. Birmingham. Make some noise Woo! for Birmingham. Birmingham. Um, I've got two really quick questions. So, first one, if you were a candle, right, <laughs> what scent would you be? <laughs> um, I did a campaign for Ferragamo, and I'm sure they'd love me to say, like, Tuscan leather with oaky, oaky notes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then my second one is like, do you have one quote that you live by? Not necessarily, not one, but one of the few that I do really like. Cause my brother told me this a while ago, and this, I'm sure there's a million proverbs that word it better, but he just says like, everything's about balance. There's not a single thing that you want to do all the way to an extreme. Everything needs to come with balance. So yeah, I'd say that. Good advice. Live by YOLO. <laughs> say that again, say that again. I live by YOLO. You only YOLO. 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 That's also a good one. Give her another That's round of applause. That's an ancient Chinese proverb, isn't it? YOLO. <laughs> YOLO. Thank you so much. First time on a mic. Thank you so much. We're going to go to uh, microphone number one right over here. Hi. Hello. So I was wondering if you've got round to reading the after books, and if not, are you planning to? Oh. <laughs> <sighs> Why didn't you just read them, man? You had the time. Why didn't you just... Do you know what? It's so, like... I, ha I haven't, and I'm so, I'm so sorry, but I, like... I read so much, like, after scripts and after, like... You know, you live it and you rewatch it, and it's, like... I'm so literally in the story that, like... I don't know. I almost don't want to, like, kind of 
tarnish it or change. There's something, there's something scary about picking up the book and things are going to change. And I like it how it is now. And I don't want to have like a different fit. And I might see something like, oh God, I should have played him differently because of that. Or, you know, so it, I, I'd be lying if I said I shouldn't read the books, but I do find it hard to pick them up. But thank you for testing me again and embarrassing me in front of everyone. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank no, you. thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. We'll go up to microphone number three up at the top. What's a secret you've never told anyone? <laughs> it's just us here, don't worry, it's just friends. <laughs> that my friend Gabriel's uni house is a tip. And he's relatively tidy, yeah, but yeah, it's typical uni house vibes, like people just need to tie. What is it about uni and being messy? Like, like I don't understand. But um, he's done now, so we'll, we'll get him to t He's giggling. <laughs> Thank you. P.S. I love you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we'll go to microphone number four at the top. Okay, so I have um, two questions. The first one is, what is your least favourite um, line you said as young Tom Riddle? Least favourite? Do you have one that you think was no. your least favourite? <laughs> um, do you know what, actually? The way I've just said that for you, like, um, I can talk to states too, they find me whisper things. People used to ask me to say that, like, in school, my brother, and I used to get so annoyed, like, I used to hate it and be like, no, I'm not doing that. So I used to just kind of <laughs> not, like, recite any of them. But, um, but do you know what? I'm so sorry. I liked all of them. I thought it was written really well. Like, I genuinely enjoyed, enjoyed all the lines there. I kind of wish I had more, to be honest. Okay. And the second one is, um, when you were writing in the book in After, what were you actually writing? No, do you know what? I genuinely was just like, the prop guy writes something that's probably started in the book, or a lot of the time he'll just write something similar. He's informed. Prop guys are always really, or girls, but they've been guys on after films. Um, really good at, at do you, I'll start flicking through and I'm like, wow, this guy is in my head, but I don't think this is in the book. Like he's, He should play hard in. So I kind of just followed on from where he went and I did get like a little bit lost in it and later found out that's actually a really good way to like get in character and be in character. And I know loads of actors who do journals and diaries from the perspective of their character to start thinking in that mind frame. So things like I love Tessa and I'm scared I'll lose her, but in a lot more eloquent wording, I reckon. And a couple doodles. I did doodle in there a fair bit. Someone's got to be able to dig that out somewhere and show you because there'll be a lot of stuff in there. But that's a great question. Thank All right, you. thank you. Also, you're one of my idols. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. We've got a question over here. We have time for about two questions, so we'll go to number two and then number one. Hi, I just wanted to say I love you so much again. Um, and thank you. I wanted to know what your favourite sweets were. Favourite what, sorry? Sweets. Sweets. Oh, I've got a sweet tooth, me. I love <laughs> sweets. Um, it's a really good question, man. I love Sour Patch. Sour Patch is good. It used to be OG, it's like wine gums and tang fastics. I feel bad saying Sour Patch because I feel to say like a UK sweet. But um, yeah, you guys can have that one, Sour Patch. I saw Thank a cola you. only flavor one recently and my hand was like, oh, don't do it, not yet. I'll do the whole packet. It's like a movie theater classic, Sour Patch. Yeah, I like pick and mix though. I'm a fan of pick and mix because I just like with my acting roles, I always want something different. What a metaphor. We're going to do our very last question here. Uh, sorry, a question. Wait, I'm so sorry. Did number two have another one? I feel like she... Thank you. She's oh, saying thank you. No worries. Thank you. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. Thank you. Our final question is going to be at microphone number one right here. Hi. I can't believe this is happening. I love you so much. Um, but what is your favorite thing about being an actor? I love the travel. And I love meeting new people. It's sad when you leave because you do really have that family aspect. You see the same people every single day and they help you and you help them and you really collaborate and work together. So that whole aspect of meeting new people and traveling is great. But honestly, honestly, and obviously I'm gonna say this, but genuinely like meeting new people and as I said about like, like unpleasant inter, I don't have them. Everyone I meet is always so lovely. And like you guys allow me to do what I do. So it's, it's priceless being able to come here and talk in front of you and honestly opportunities especially in the UK when I have the time I'll try and make 
try and consistently, he doesn't like my answer, no. or she. Um, but no, I'm gonna try my best to consistently come and meet fans because I think this probably does take the cake. Now, like, look at this, this is amazing. Like, you can, I'm speechless, literally. So it's meeting all of the supportive fans who allow me to do what, to do what I do. So thank you guys so much. Thank you. Before we let Hero get back to the photo op and autograph area, I'm sure you'll go see him there after. Uh, final question from me, can you talk about your upcoming projects and what you're excited for the rest of the year? Nah. No? <laughs> <laughs> um, I've got First Love coming out. Thank you, thank you. As I said, excited for that one. The Loneliest Boy in the World is really fun and so different. And I'm, again, so excited for that one. And then The Woman King that I shot in South Africa with Viola Davis and John Boyega. I've said in interviews before, I want to work with John Boyega. That guy's like grown up down the road for me. He's loved everything he's done. And I've managed to, to, to get a scene with him in The Woman King. So it's so nice as well that The Woman King is so different from The Loneliest Boy in the World. And, and I think I see someone sleeping in the front row on the left. Don't wake him. He is Shh. legit sleeping, I think. Don't. Hey, Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I don't mean to wake you. <laughs> don't worry. It's almost over. <laughs> but I've got a, wi a, wide, a wide variety of different films. And I'm equally excited for all of them in their own different way. Go on, shout it. You're trying to say something. What, one of you maybe, sorry. Oh, of course, that goes without saying. That goes without saying. There's always an after film. I'm gonna be 89 and there will be an after film coming out next year. You probably won't wanna watch it at that point. But no, of course. So, thank you for saying that. Who, who, what have I, thank you. After ever happy, of course. <laughs> Lots to look forward to. And Hero, you have been such a gentleman. So much fun to get your insight. Please give a huge round of applause to Hero Finds Tiffin, who is heading back to the autograph area. Make sure guys, you come say hello. Thank you so, so much, honestly. Love you guys. So much. You Keep it there. going for Hero and, and, Finds and for you, Tiffin. And thank you. you. Thank you, guys. Keep it going, guys, for Take Hero care. Finds Tiffin. Yes. Thanks for your questions. We'll see you for the next one.